It's day nine of the 10 day accessibility challenge. Today, we'll brighten things up with a little talk about color. Hi everyone. There's a good reason why we chose whiteboard animation for the 10 day accessibility challenge. Wait, you didn't know I'm a cartoon? You thought I was real? <laughs> Just kidding. I know that you know I'm a drawing. All joking aside, black text on a white background offers high contrast, making these animations accessible to the widest possible audience. When we design with color, we are most concerned with two things, the use of color to convey meaning and the contrast between background colors and text or graphical objects. With that in mind, rule number one is never use color alone to convey meaning. Almost 10% of the population is colorblind. One in 12 men are colorblind and one in 200 women. Statistically, every day in every one of your classes, there is potentially more than one colorblind student. The most common types of colorblindness are protonomaly and deuteronomaly, which affect the red and green cones of the eye. With this type of vision, there's little distinction between reds and greens. So what someone with normal vision sees like this, someone with protonomaly sees like this. For this reason, we want to avoid instructions like this. All work due on Tuesdays is listed in red, and all work due on Thursdays is in green. So should we simply avoid color? Not so fast. The rule is not never use color, it's never use color alone. When color is used to convey meaning, combine the color with patterns, like this. So now we're at rule number two. Ensure you have proper color contrast. People with low vision, cataracts, and or color blindness will not be able to see your text or graphics if the contrast between the background and the foreground is not adequate. Frankly, given the wide range of visual perception, color contrast is not something you can determine with the naked eye. Instead, we recommend you use a tool to check contrast. Let's take a look at a Canvas page. We often see pages where the instructor has used Canvas's default palette to add visual appeal to the page, either by using colored fonts or by using a background color. But is this accessible? To check, we first need the six-digit hex code for each color. To find the code, open the HTML editor. Here's the code for the orange, the green, and the purple. I'm going to copy this code and then go to the WebAIM Color Contrast Checker. The foreground color is our text color, and in this case, the background color is white. Paste the code into the foreground color field. This color does not have adequate contrast, not for normal text, large text, or graphical objects. Orange is actually a very problematic color. Don't lose hope though. Let's check another feature of the color contrast checker. Use the slide bar to darken the color. Bingo! Now you have the code for the color that does pass. Copy this from the foreground color field, then replace the color code in your Canvas HTML. Let's check the green. Copy the code, then paste it into the WebAIM contrast checker. This one is better. It passes for graphical objects and large texts, but not normal text. One more try. Purple. Phew! Finally a winner. The moral of this story is that the default colors are not always accessible, but there are tools to get to accessible colors. Being accessible doesn't mean we should completely avoid color. We know color can bring visual appeal to a page, it can focus our attention, and it can even lift our mood. So use color, but use it wisely. Let's go! Great job, you did it! Sharing what works is the key to our success. We'll see you tomorrow for the last day of the 10-Day Accessibility Challenge.